Hello everyone. Welcome to astrologynewsreport.com. Today is July 13th, 2014. Presenting an alternate view of world events as seen through the lens of Vedic astrology. I'm Ron Berger. And I'm David Anton Savage. Let's take a look at the week that was. Mars was still in mutual aspect to Uranus last week, still fueling rebellion and violence around the world. And now Mars and Rahu are conjunct as they change signs, the planet of violence, with the significator of transformation, obsession, and confusion. And highly unstable as they are both changing signs, going in opposite directions while they are conjunct. And as we've all seen, the Israel-Palestine situation, reignited by the kidnapping and killing of teenagers on both sides, went into full retribution mode last week. Hamas has fired hundreds of rockets into Israel, and Israel has responded in predictable fashion with hundreds of airstrikes, and has proceeded to mobilize ground forces in anticipation of a full-on assault on Gaza. Here's a look at the Vedic Astrology birth chart of Israel, which we did an analysis of back in December. Note that Israel is in a Mars major period, Mars being the planet of war, and now it's the Venus sub-period for Israel, where Venus occupies the sixth house of struggle and defense. Mars was still transiting in Virgo last week, sending its malevolent aspect into the third house, the house of neighboring countries where Uranus, the planet of sudden events, has been transiting. This blow-up, if anything unexpected, arises from a series of events that just recently occurred. And now Mars heads into Libra, the tenth house of Israel's chart, the planet of action and war in the house of the leader, which is already activated by the Venus sub-period. It's doubtful that the Israeli leadership will be backing down any time soon. The Mars-Uranus interaction also gave more results from Mother Nature in the form of unusual and unexpected nasty weather events. A super typhoon, the first to hit the southern islands of Japan in decades, displaced over a half million people, and caused millions of damages. Meanwhile, in the USA, a destructive tornado tore through upstate New York, a rarely seen weather event for that part of the country. Mars is the planet of action. Rahu represents foreigners. The two planets are conjunct in the heavens as they change signs while going in opposite direction. Rahu is entering Virgo, the tenth house of the USA chart, while Mars is about to leave Virgo. The tenth house is the leader, in other words, the president, and the eleventh house is Congress. President Obama journeyed to Texas last week, where a worsening humanitarian crisis has developed during recent months. The explosion of Central American children who have descended upon the U.S. border. There are not enough immigration personnel to deal with this massive influx of undocumented minors, they are being warehoused in, well, warehouses. Obama's response has been to ask Congress for $3.7 billion to deal with the problem. Congress is, well, uh, doing what Congress does. Dither. And right on cue, conservative groups have come to the border regions to block buses, dispatch to transfer the children to other processing centers, and to protest against illegal immigration. Mercury, as the communications planet, is in its own sign Gemini, a sign that loves gathering information, and this can sometimes lead to TMI, too much information. In a case of spy versus spy versus spy, Germany has suspended a 70-year no-spy pact with the U.S. over an arrested German double agent. The German intelligence agent had been recruited by the CIA to pass along information on Germany's attempts to find out how much spying the USA was doing on Germany. The agent was found to have an encrypted program in his cell phone disguised as a weather app. 
and then the whole thing grew more legs as the week continued. Another German was found, also engaged in spying for the U.S. Angela Merkel, Chancellor of Germany, kind of lost it at that point, and demanded that the chief at the U.S. CIA station in Berlin leave the country. Mercury is the planet of making decisions, and thus governs elections. Mercury has been in dualistic Gemini for nearly two months. Saturn is the planet of the workers, and therefore becomes the planet of democracy, the government of the workers. Saturn has been retrograde for the last few months. Under these conditions, Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim country, just held national elections last week. Early surveys show the popular Jakarta governor Joko Widodo with a slim lead over his opponent, General Prabowo Subianto. But Subianto is refusing to concede, insisting that he is the winner. In any case, the full results won't be known for another few weeks. Indonesia is a big country with many towns in remote areas. Meanwhile, Afghanistan is having its own presidential election crisis. Nearly a month after a runoff election was held, the two contenders are now in a pitched battle over alleged election fraud. The loser, Abdullah Abdullah, will not concede. He's threatening to set up a parallel government or to seize control of the government with his supporters. And this would cause an already unstable central government to lose further credibility with the people, paving the way for a Taliban takeover. Secretary of State John Kerry is on the scene trying to stop the total implosion of yet another country we tried to save for democracy. Team America World Police is just not working out these days. Well, the latest news reports are that everyone has agreed to a full recount of the votes, all eight million of them. Mm. And here's something weird. Just as Rahu is about to move out of the USA Charts 11th house, Rahu is the significator of toxins. The 11th house of the USA chart is Congress. A toxic spill situation was discovered in the Capitol building. Turns out it was asbestos. A hazardous materials team had to be called in to clean up the mess. Hey, Ron, does that mean that with Rahu now leaving Libra, the U.S. Congress will become less toxic? That's a good call, David. Let's hope so. And so we conclude this week's Review of the Week. Be sure to click in with us next week.